Hey, welcome to the channel. Having a way to filter records in a table was always clunky in Rails because you'd either have to write a lot of JavaScript and figure out how to make it work with pagination, or you'd not use JavaScript at all and only do it server-side, but that didn't feel very responsive and modern. But thankfully now we have Hotwire, and adding filtering to a table with pagination can be done in just a few minutes. And in this video I'm going to show you how. I'm going to start by copying everything related to the CRUD table from a previous video where I showed how to do inline editing and I'm going to add this input field at the top which we'll use for filtering the records. And I'm also going to paginate the filtered results on the back end. Everything you see here takes about 5 minutes to build and there is almost no JavaScript involved or at least it's totally optional. But the end result feels very responsive. All thanks to the new Hotwire technology available in Rails 7. If you want to learn all about building Rails applications using the latest version of Rails, I'm making a new course about it. Check out this link here. So let's look at how to go about building this functionality. As I mentioned, the first step is to copy over the table layout from the inline editing video, so that will be my starting point. If you haven't watched that video yet, here is a quick walkthrough. Basically, I've started with a generated scaffold, which normally uses one page for each of the CRAD actions. So for the index page, you'd have a list of records displayed in a more detailed format with some buttons for navigation to show and edit pages. Then you'll have more on those pages for deleting records and going back to the index page. But the way this works is everything is laid out on the index page. So we have this table of records which you can use to add, update and delete them. And there is no back and forth between the different pages. Everything happens here. I can create a new record, I can update it, I can delete it, you get the picture. So we'll add a filtering option on top of this. I'm going to add a form to the top of this table which will consist of just one text field. And when I submit the form, I'm going to re-render this index page. As you can see, if I type something in that input box and hit enter, the page will reload and the filter of results will be displayed. I've slowed down the network a bit so you can see the reload happening more clearly. Now this is not a regular full page reload, it's still using Turbo Drive to swap the entire body of the page. So that's not ideal, we can replace just the results because nothing else changes. So to do that we can wrap the results in a turbo frame tag instead of a div and we need to connect the form to this frame by adding the turbo frame attribute to the form and point it to the context frame. Because the form is outside of this frame. So now if we try that again we can see that everything stays put except for the filtered results. Just that part of the page gets updated. So that's nice, but there's a small problem with this. If you look at the address bar, you'll see it doesn't change. So we can't bookmark this search because the filters don't get added to the URL. Fortunately, that's easy to fix. By adding the turbo action data attribute with the value of advance, we can achieve that. Now, whenever we submit the form, the filter param gets added to the URL. And lastly, hitting enter every time we want to filter is kind of okay, but it would be nicer if the filtering would start automatically after we type something in the field. And to do that, we can add a stimulus controller and connect it to the form by using the data controller attribute. Then we hook into any input event that's happening inside this form by adding the data action attribute. So whenever an input event gets triggered anywhere inside this form, it bubbles up to the form and the submit action in the stimulus controller gets triggered. The submit action simply submits the form after it's debounced, meaning it won't get submitted every time we type a letter into the field. That would create too many requests. Instead, it's going to submit the form when we pause typing for a few milliseconds. And because the index template wraps the context in a turbo frame tag, just the contents of that frame tag will be updated. So the page doesn't reload, the only part of the page that gets updated is the list of contacts. And that's why it feels so responsive, because we don't do a full page reload. Now let's add pagination using the pagey gem. With pagination, we're only getting back 10 records per page. So it doesn't matter that I've added a thousand records in the database because we're never going to load more than 10 of them from the server. The pagey gem makes it easy to add pagination. We simply include the modules in both the controller and the helper. And then on the controller side, we wrap the records with the pagey method. 
And on the view side, we can use the Pagey Nav helper to render the pagination links. By default, they don't have any styling, but we can copy and paste some from their GitHub page. And just by doing that, we now have working pagination in place, and it's using turbo frames as well. But if you look at the address bar, you'll see we have the same problem we had before. Luckily, it's easy to fix. We add turbo action as an option to the PG nav helper, and now we can share our bookmark links with pagination. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more like it, check out my Hotwire playlist which I've linked in the description. Bye!